Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. In this video, we're going to be dissecting the latest artificial intelligence news, we're going to be talking about Uber, Google, Nvidia, Tesla, and a plethora of other fantastic companies, so make sure to stay tuned. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Stocks have been rising recently, despite a small pullback due to hotter than anticipated inflation data. But it looks like recently, they are starting to regain their momentum, which is fantastic news for investors. We have a multitude of stocks in this video that have literally jumped in their share price by over 14%, and that would include companies like Uber, which is a ride-sharing and ride-hailing company. Recently, Uber has jumped by around 14% in their share price to now trade at around 79% dollars per share, which is great news for investors. The reason for the enthusiasm surrounding Uber recently is due to their $7 billion share buyback program, which is going to be their first ever repurchase plan. So they are starting this off with a bang. You should also know that I personally hold a Lyft as well as Uber in my personal portfolio, but I would highly encourage you to do your own research on both of those companies before you make any investment decision. We also have Meta Platforms and Apple in the news today, considering that they are in in fierce competition with one another. Meta's CEO, who is Mark Zuckerberg, recently released a three-minute Instagram reel which absolutely decimated and criticized Apple's new wearable technology called the Apple Vision Pro. Now, for context, we need to remember that both Meta and Apple are fighting over market share of the wearable technology space. These two behemoths are fighting over the market in regards to mixed reality and virtual reality headsets. And Meta was actually a first mover in this market, and Apple is trying to catch up to them. This is one of the reasons why Meta's CEO is talking negatively about the Apple Vision Pro, because it competes directly with their own Quest headset, particularly the Quest 3. So now that you have some background about this, let's talk about what Mark Zuckerberg actually had to say about Apple's new product. He says, and I quote, I don't just think that Quest is the better value. I think Quest is the better product period, end quote. Those are some sharp words that are digging into Apple's market, and that's exactly where Meta wants to be. You should also know that Meta's Quest 3 can do essentially the same thing that the Apple Vision Pro can do, including spatial computing, which is where you can hang floating screens in mixed reality. But the price points for these products are radically different, considering that Meta's headset starts at around $500, while the Apple Vision Pro is around $3,500. Essentially, Apple is using their brand name to mark up a substantial premium on their product. And this is despite Meta actually being a first mover in this area and arguably has the better technology. The reason why I say Meta has a better technology is because the Quest 3 does not have a wired battery pack and it's actually substantially lighter than the Vision Pro because some people have criticized the Vision Pro for being too heavy which has caused headaches or even neck pain in some instances. However, Apple's Vision Pro does does have an edge up because they do have a higher resolution screen which is superior to the Quest 3 and they also have unparalleled eye tracking which is great for a multitude of apps within the Apple Vision Pro. At the end of the day we see the Apple effect taking hold where people are buying Apple products just for the brand name and not necessarily the technology behind that product. We have seen the Apple effect take place in a multitude of products including phones, personal computers, as well as earphones and this is going to be no different. At the end of the day, I hold both of those companies in my personal portfolio, and I would highly recommend you do your own research on both of those companies to determine if they are good investments for you. Next up, let's quickly talk about cryptocurrency news. Because Bitcoin recently surpassed $1 trillion in their total value for the first time since 2021, which is great news for cryptocurrency holders. This is pretty astounding considering that the overall crypto market in general is worth around $2 trillion dollars. So Bitcoin literally makes up around half of the entire cryptocurrency market by themselves. If Bitcoin was a publicly traded company, they would easily rank in the top 10 most valuable companies in the world that are publicly traded. And if the entire cryptocurrency market was a publicly traded company, they would be the fourth largest in the world right behind Microsoft, Apple, and Saudi Aramco. One of the largest contributors which is causing Bitcoin to increase in their overall price is due to spot Bitcoin ETFs, where people can invest into these ETFs, which tracks the price of Bitcoin. 
This is allowing old school or more traditional investors to invest into Bitcoin without holding the cryptocurrency itself. And ultimately, this is helping Bitcoin's price reach new potential highs, so I am very excited for this. We also have an approaching catalyst for Bitcoin, and that would be the Bitcoin halving. The halving is a feature within Bitcoin that reduces the rate of new coins entering circulation by half and this keeps supply in check. Essentially, Bitcoin gets its value from scarcity, because Bitcoin is a finite resource, so cutting a supply theoretically pushes up prices. That's why Bitcoin becomes more and more valuable as time goes on. This halving event actually occurs approximately every four years, and in the past, this has led to dazzling price jumps in Bitcoin's BTC price. As an example, last time this event occurred in 2020, this actually resulted in a 700% gain for investors in Bitcoin, so this is a huge deal. Therefore, with the catalyst of spot Bitcoin ETFs as well as a halving event coming up, this is great news for Bitcoin and Bitcoin holders. But that's not all because we also have Elon Musk in the news recently. Elon Musk has been flirting with the idea to take SpaceX and Tesla out from Delaware, and he actually did this for SpaceX because he recently filed to switch the incorporation location of SpaceX to Texas from the their original Delaware dwelling. Therefore, it might be only a matter of time before Elon Musk does this with Tesla, so clearly we are going to see reverberation in Tesla's share price due to this, although they will be small reverberations because we do have a larger story about Tesla later in this video, so stay tuned for that. Next up, let's talk about some artificial intelligence or AI news, and this is very relevant for stockholders. Microsoft, which is one of my favorite investments, has heavily been investing into companies like OpenAI for their artificial intelligence prowess. And if you didn't know, OpenAI is the company which created ChatGPT. And recently, ChatGPT had major news. Here is what the article has to say about this update. It says, the world's most famous chatbot is going to remember you. For those tired of repeating the same info to ChatGPT, OpenAI introduced a solution, a memory feature that will store info about you to personalize responses. It will recall that you are lactose intolerant and it will stop sharing cheese-loaded recipes for you. Speaking about artificial intelligence companies, let's talk about NVIDIA. And traders in the United States are absolutely teeming with excitement as NVIDIA approaches their upcoming earnings report on February 21st. NVIDIA is known for making GPUs and other products which are directly related to artificial intelligence generation. NVIDIA's NVDA shares are already up around 50% this year, and we could see an even larger swing after their February 21st earnings results. As of right now, experts are predicting a swing of around 11% either for the positive or negative in their share price after these quarterly results, so investors are bracing themselves. Now, as an investor, you should know that NVIDIA normally beats on their earnings, to where over the last three years, investors have seen a positive upswing of around 6.7% over that period on average. As for their approaching earnings report, we just have to hope that investors are not too overly optimistic to where anything NVIDIA brings in may not live up to the hype. For NVIDIA's earnings, they are anticipated to bring in earnings of $4.56 per share, and if they beat that expectation, we know that the share price will increase. We also know NVIDIA is anticipated to bring in very impressive quarterly revenues of $20.378 billion, which is a gigantic increase from the $6.05 billion that they brought in last year. On top of that, we also got good news in regards to NVIDIA's market cap, considering that they are now, quote, a more valuable company than Alphabet, which is the parent company to Google and YouTube. I am very excited about NVIDIA's upcoming earnings report, and I personally think this is going to be phenomenal for their share price to where it is going to surge by around 11% and then pull back immediately after. So as an investor or a stock trader, please take advantage of this. Next up in the news, we have DraftKings stock, which brought in mixed quarter four results. DraftKings is a company which operates a sports betting platform, and they recently brought in quarter four results on top of pretty good news considering that they are acquiring a lottery app. First, let's talk about their earnings results because this negatively impacted DraftKings DNKG stock. The company reported adjusted earnings of 29 cents per share, which was a huge improvement from the 14 cents that they brought in last year. This also beat analysts' estimates because they thought the company would only bring in 22 cents per share, so ultimately this was good news, not bad news, so I don't really know why the share price is falling right now. It just goes to show you that investors are being unreasonable about this report. However, investors might not be that unreasonable considering 
noting that DraftKings did miss on their revenue growth. As an example, their revenue increased by 43% to a record of $1.23 billion. However, this did not live up to analyst expectations, considering analysts thought the company would grow their revenue by 45% up to $1.24 billion. So maybe that's why the share price is falling right now. But ultimately, earnings are better than revenues, so I really don't know what investors are doing right now. We need to be paying attention to the stuff that really matters, and by DraftKings jumping even a 43% in the revenue, that is still extremely impressive in my book. On top of that, the company also has a very impressive projections for the year of 2024 in regards to the revenue. So take a listen here. The company is expecting to bring in between $4.65 billion to $4.9 billion, which would represent a 27% to a 34% growth rate in their revenue. And the reason why this is good is because it's above their previous guidance for the company to bring in $4.5 billion to $4.8 billion. So this is a very positive development in regards to their full year revenues. You should also know that the company announced that they will acquire Jackpocket, which is the leading lottery app in the United States, and DraftKings will acquire them for $750 million, with about 55% being in cash and the rest will be in DraftKings stock. This deal is anticipated to close during the second half of 2024, but right now they are pending regulatory approval. But in general, I would say this is actually a positive news update for DraftKings in totality, so I don't really know why the share price is falling. But one thing's for sure, as this company's share price decreases, I will continue to nibble at them because I believe the future potential of this company is great. Next up, let's talk about Tesla, which is an electric vehicle manufacturer which specializes in energy storage, energy generation, and artificial intelligence. For the last few weeks, Tesla stock has been falling very dramatically, but recently they brought in two straight days of gains, and that's what I like to see. The electric vehicle maker was hovering at around $189.64, and then they jumped up to around $196.07 recently, and this is great news. I've personally been buying this company the lower that they go, because anything under $200 for Tesla is an absolute steal, because the future growth of this company is literally insane, so you might as well get on the boat now before you miss out. But don't just take my word for it, go and do your own due diligence and tell me what you think of Tesla down below, because I believe this company is going to be a phenomenal company to hold in the future, and potentially this company could be one of, if not the most valuable company in the entire world, but only time will tell. Next up in the news, we have Toast, ticker symbol T-O-S-T, -T, ticker name Toast, which is laying off around 550 employees. And for some context, this is a restaurant-focused software company. Toast is known for processing payments for restaurants, and they went public back in September of 2021, but ever since then, the company's share price has slumped by around 52%. As of 2022, the company employed around 4,500 workers, so that means this recent layoff of around 550 workers is pretty substantial. Due to the news of their layoffs, the company's share price dropped by around 4.7% down to $19.20. Sense. But we also have to take into consideration that this company jumped by more than 8% after a recent earnings report. But before you make any investments into this company, you should know that they have a huge rival, and that would be Block. And in my opinion, I like Block better than Toast. However, always make sure to do your own research. Toast is currently on a watch list for me, and I'm waiting for this company to drop low enough for me to actually purchase them. Because Toast is not the only one that is experiencing layoffs right now. A lot of other technology companies are doing this, and their rival block is also laying off employees. Therefore, we can conclude that Toast is not laying off employees because they are not operating their business efficiently, but rather, this is across their entire market. So, do with that information what you will, and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about Toast stock. Next up, let's talk about Coinbase, ticker symbol C-O-I-N, ticker name Coin, and this company operates a cryptocurrency exchange. The two recent news updates for this company is that they brought in quarter four results for their revenue and earnings, and JP Morgan Chase actually upgraded coin stock, which is very good news for this company. First, let's talk about their earnings report. Coinbase reported diluted earnings of $1.04 per share, which is a huge improvement from their loss of $2.46 per share last year. So this is very good news, and on top of that, their total revenue spiked by 51% up to $953.8 million, which beat analysts' estimates because they thought the company would only bring in $826 million, and that's what's causing the share price to rise right now. The company was also upgraded by JP Morgan, which upgraded the rating for this company from an underweight rating to a neutral rating, which is very positive. 
However, you should know that JP Morgan maintained their $80 price target for coin stock, which is 50% below where shares closed recently on Wednesday. So do with that information what you will, and I would love to hear your thoughts down below about Coinbase. Next up, let's talk about Applied Materials, which is a semiconductor equipment vendor. The reason why their share price is surging right now is because they easily beat Wall Street estimates. And this is what I mean. The company earned an adjusted $2.13 a share on sales of $6.71 billion for the quarter. Analysts thought the company would bring in $6.48 billion, but they actually brought in $6.71 billion, which is great news for the company. But the news gets even better, because their earnings per share were only anticipated to come in at $1.90, but like we said, it actually came in at $2.13 a share, which is great news for investors. The company's chief executive even had this to say, and I quote, Applied Materials delivered strong results in the first quarter of fiscal 2024 and has outperformed our markets for the fifth consecutive year. He goes on to say, Our leadership positions at key semiconductor inflections support continued outperformance as customers ramp next generation chip technologies critical to AI and IoT. That means the future demand for this company's products are anticipated to increase over the next several years. So I'm very excited that they had a phenomenal earnings beat, and I believe that AMAT stock is a great stock to hold in your portfolio, so feel free to look further into them. Next up, let's talk about Roku and why they recently tumbled by 17% in their share price. Roku is a type of streaming company, and they recently released their fourth quarter earnings report, which was very good in my opinion. Their revenues came in better than anticipated, and the company logged double-digit gains in accounts and hours streamed. As an example, professionals thought this company's revenue would only increase by 11.5%, but they actually rose by 14%, up to $984.4 million. On top of that, the company narrowed their net losses per share, because a year ago they brought in a loss of $1.70 per share, and they recently narrowed that down to just $0.55 cents per share, which is great news. Meanwhile, the company hit positive numbers in adjusted EBITDA and free cash flow for the full year, which is ahead of schedule. Again, this is more great news for the company, so this drop by 17% in their share price is unwarranted. The CEO of the company even had this to say, and I quote, We plan to increase revenue and free cash flow and achieve profitability over time. At the same time, we remain mindful of near-term challenges in the macro environment and an uneven ad market recovery, end quote. In general, this company still looks pretty good considering that their earnings were very impressive and they are lowering and narrowing their losses. Now, I don't really know how I feel about this company in general, but I'd love to hear your thoughts down below about this company. So tell me if you hold Roku in your portfolio. Next up, let's talk about the parent company of Google, which is Alphabet, but I do want to particularly talk about their Google segment, ticker symbol G-O-O-G-L or ticker symbol G-O-O-G for Alphabet. The reason for the decrease in their share price is because because there are rumors going around that rival AI company named OpenAI could potentially be planning to launch their own web searching tool. However, there is good news here because Google announced the availability of a recent Gemini update to Gemini 1.5, and this is an improved AI training model. The CEO of Google's DeepMind, which is their AI research lab, even had this to say, and I quote, this is an exciting time for AI. New advances in the field have the potential to make AI more helpful for billions of people over the coming years. Since introducing Gemini 1.0 in December of 2023, we've been testing, refining, and enhancing its capabilities." End quote. So honestly, I think this is a very good positive catalyst for this company. But with that being said, people are paying attention to Microsoft, which again, has heavily invested into OpenAI. Because remember, Microsoft owns Bing, which is a competitor to Google. But as of right now, these are just rumors, and I just wanted to keep you updated on the latest artificial intelligence news. In other news, we saw the trade desk explode in their share price recently by jumping over 18%. The reason for this surge is because this advertising technology company issued strong first quarter guidance and beat on revenue. Now, investors do need to remember that they did miss on their earnings per share. They were anticipated to bring in 43 cents per share, but they only brought in 41 cents. But investors have clearly overlooked this because of the great increase in their revenue. Professionals thought the company would bring in $582 million, but they actually brought in $606 million, which was a fantastic revenue beat for this company. The trade desk said that first quarter sales will be at 
least $478 million, which will top Wall Street expectations of $452 million. So this just adds to the momentum and the happiness surrounding this company. But what really excited investors is that the company said that they have approved their $647 million share repurchasing program. And this would bring their total future buybacks to $700 million. If you don't really know what this company does, the Trade Desk specializes in providing technology to companies that want to target users across the web, and has capitalized on the continuing shift in corporate ad budgets from traditional television to connected TVs and streaming platforms. The CEO of Trade Desk even said, more and more of the world's leading advertisers are gravitating to channels and partnerships that offer precision and premium value at scale, such as connected TV and and retail media, end quote. So essentially, the Trade Desk specializes and optimizes marketing campaigns for various companies. I personally am a big fan of this company, and I hold them in my portfolio, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below in the comments. We also have DoorDash in the news, and their share prices increased by over 5% recently, so let's talk about why that is. DoorDash recently projected annual core profit largely above expectations, and they beat fourth quarter revenue estimates. This signals to investors that more and more people are becoming used to using DoorDash's platform to either order food or grocery items. The CEO of DoorDash even said this, and I quote, We have to be able to continue attracting new customers and driving higher consumer engagement for the simple reason that our service continues to get better. And it seems that the data is in line with the CEO's future projections, considering that DoorDash expects their 2024 EBITDA to be between $1.5 billion and $1.9 billion. In general, this is very good news for the company, and the company is also narrowing their net losses down to just $154 million dollars or 39 cents per share. For comparison, a year earlier, the company had $640 million worth of net losses, and they brought in a loss of $1.65 per share. So clearly this company is rapidly improving. So I would love to hear if you hold this company in your portfolio down below in the comments. With that being said, that concludes today's stock market news updates. So go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new, comment your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.